Hello, victorious ones. How are you doing? I hope everybody is having a wonderful, wonderful day. I'm just coming on here really quickly to encourage someone. Coming on here quickly to encourage someone and the Lord. Let me invite some people real quick. I'm just going to invite some people really quickly. So I'm just here getting ready for the prayer rally that's coming up on Monday. If you have not registered yet, go on and register. Yes, I'm just coming on here to encourage somebody with Psalm 121. I'm going to put the link for you guys to register for the prayer rally. Tomorrow I'll be taking some time off to just really fast and pray um, about that rally. Because, you know, when you're at the edge of a, break, a breakthrough, when you're on the verge of a breakthrough, you have to be very focused. And so, hi, Colette. And so I want to make sure that on Monday, my, my, my cords, vocal cords, are strong because we're going to pray, you know, I love to pray, oh my God. And so um, I'm also writing down everything the Holy Spirit is speaking to me about. He speaks so clearly, so, so clearly. I was talking to a prayer warrior today, this morning, and we would talk about her husband, her marriage. Then I looked and there was the word, it says Mexus, M-E-X-U-S. I'm like, what is Mexus? And so when I looked it up, I only saw the word Nexus, N-E-X-U-S. And it means to bond or to bind together. Whom God is joined together, let nobody separate. Right there in the conversation, the Lord showed me that. And so, you know, it just helps you to pray God's word. That God said, so those of you who are married, whom he has joined together, let nobody separate. Amen? And so I just pray that those of you who are following the ministry, you're praying for your marriage, I pray that God will just make our marriages even stronger. Amen? All right, so let's go to Psalm 121. This morning I woke up and I, I had Psalm 121 in my mind. And it says, King James Version, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, which made heaven and earth. If you're listening to me, number one, you have to make sure your eyes are always on the Lord. The enemy's job is to make sure that our eyes are all over, being distracted. But the Psalms, it says, I will lift up mine eyes. So you can't have your eyes looking around the earth. Talk about your spiritual eyes. Amen? Because they that worship God must worship God in what? Spirit and in truth. Amen? So your natural eyes are going to deceive you every time. Amen? So your spiritual eyes, I will lift up mine eyes unto the hills. From whence cometh my help? You have to know where your help is coming from. You, you need to know that you know that you know where your help is coming from and where your help is not coming from. Okay? Know the difference. We need to know as the body of Christ that our help is always coming from Yahweh. Amen? And so that's why we look to the hills. We're not worshiping the hills. We're looking up. The hills is a symbolic of God. God is higher than we are. He said, my ways and my thoughts are higher than, than that of the human beings, right? So it says, I'm going to lift my eyes up to the hills because my help is coming from up there. My help is coming from the Lord. What Lord? Elohim, the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Verse 3. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. Why? Because on Christ the solid rock, that's where we're standing. So it says, 
he will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He's putting you in a, in a firm place where God is keeping you unmovable. They that trust in the Lord are like Mount Zion, firmly established in the will and word of God, firmly planted in God. He will not suffer thy foot to be moved. He that keepeth thee, who is keeping you? He that keepeth thee will not slumber. Our God is not going to fall asleep on us. He's not going to fall asleep. He's always watching us because he loves us. Amen. And so it says, Behold, he that keepeth Israel shall neither slumber nor sleep. God is the one that's keeping us. I love how he, they repeat, he's not going to slumber. He's not going to slumber. He's not going to slumber. He's not going to fall asleep on you. He's not going to ignore you. God said, my eyes are always on the righteous. My eyes are always watching you. My ears are always attentive to your cry. Verse 5 says, the Lord is thy keeper. The Lord is thy shade at thy right hand. God is going to cover you. Psalm 91 is your portion. And then it says, the sun will not smite thee by day, nor the moon by night. The same thing as Psalm 91. Amen. So God is our protector. No matter what you're going through, God's going to protect you. So it says, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. So no weapon formed against us is going to prosper. Why? Because the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. God's going to preserve your mind, your will, and emotion. That's why Psalm 23 verse 3 says, God restores your soul. And then finally, verse 8 the Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. I love the word preserve. Let's look at the word preserve. What does that mean? Let's look at the word preserve. Preserve. What does that mean? Speak Holy Spirit. Preserve means to maintain something in its original state. So let's go back to Psalm 121 and so it says the lord shall preserve thee from all evil keep you in your original state the way that he made you the lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in from this time forth and even forevermore let's look at the def different different definition for preserve we got the first one the second definition it says um a sphere of activity regarded as being reserved for a particular person Okay, so when something is reserved, it's set aside for somebody. Amen? Set aside for you. And so we all have a we have power and authority. Amen. The um Christ says, power and authority I've given to you. Right? So when you have power and authority, God assigned you to a different sphere, right? A different area. The the, the synonym for the word preserve for this definition, a sphere or activity regarded as being reserved for a particular person or group. So God has called you to a particular assignment, particular blessings. It says domain, area, field, sphere, orbit. They got that word orbit again. We've been talking about orbit now for two weeks. It means realm, province, specialism, territory, department. And so Preserve is a sphere of activity regarded as being reserved. God has placed you in a certain region, a um, certain territory, and you have dominion in that area. That's why where you at, you got to look around. You have dominion in that area. And don't let the devil try to trick you wherever you are. The Bible says wherever your foot land, God said you're going to own it. And so we all have different um, assignments. Different different things that God will have us to do. And we also have different blessings assigned to us that have our name. It says a sphere of activity regarded as being reserved for a particular person or group. And so I receive that for myself in the name of Jesus. You think about domain. You think about area, field. We all got different gifts that God has given to us. And we know about orbit. Talk about the word orbit. Orbit is also your eye socket. You must be able to locate where God has positioned you and where God has given you authority. Amen. Orbit also means the earth going around the sun. The sun is Jesus in our case. And so the earth is going around the sun. We got to go around orbit the sun, which is Jesus. That I'm talking about knowing your source of power. Knowing your source of power is going to preserve your soul. Psalm 121. Another definition means food made with 
um, fruit preserved and sugar, such as jam. So you want to preserve the food. There's different things you can do. For example, if you want to preserve meat, you put salt on it. God says we are the salt of the earth. God said, I'm going to preserve your soul. I'm your salt. I'm going to preserve you with the blood of Jesus. I'm going to preserve you with the salt of the word. Psalm 121 is our birthright. It is our portion from this day forward. And in the name of Jesus, also the word preserve mean to protect, to maintain, to care for. God is saying clearly to us, I'm going to protect you. I'm going to conserve you. I'm going to maintain you. I'm going to care for you. I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to look after you. I'm going to save you. I'm going to safeguard you. I'm going to keep you in all your ways. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Now let's go back to Psalm 121. Now that we have broken down that word, it says, the Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. That's why the demons are trembling right now because you know you got power and authority to trample over serpents and scorpions, crush them under your feet, your blood washed feet. God said, I've given you power and dominion. He said, be fruitful and multiply. He said, I've given you dominion. You have power, not just your power. Talk, talk about my power. I'm talking about the dunamis power of God, the, the powerful Creator lives inside of us and he is preserving us from all evil. No weapon formed against us will prosper. He has given us the keys of the kingdom. Whatever you bind on earth shall be bound. Listen, whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. Whatever you loose on earth will be loose in heaven. We got power. God said, walk in your power. It's time for the body of Christ to get up out of, out of the valley of dry bones. He said, listen, I have breath, new breath to give to you. I want to blow into your situation. I want, I want the dry bones to come back alive. It was by no coincidence that heaven called me today about a baby who has issues with its lungs. God says many of us, we have issues with the lungs, the lungs of your marriage. The lungs of your prayer life, the lungs, the lungs of your faith, the lungs of your ministry. And he said, come forth, breath of God, from the four corners of the earth, from the seven continents. And God want to blow new life into you so that he can fulfill his word, which is I'm going to preserve you in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, God is preserving us. Hallelujah. His angels are performing right now spiritual CPR on you. In the name of Jesus, the Bible says, when the, the child died in the book of Kings, Elisha spread himself out on that child. That was symbolic of CPR. And the Bible says he prayed for that child. And the child began to sneeze seven times. God is giving your situation the breath. I'm talking about the breath of life. The breath of life. The enemy tried to kill you. But God said not so. I'm preserving you. You shall not die but live. And I speak this over that child that we're praying for. I speak this over everybody who's listening to me. Over my family. You will not die but live. To declare the works of the living God. He said. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. No weapon formed against you will prosper. Your angels are standing all around you and camp all around you to protect you. Psalm 91 is your portion. The Lord shall preserve thee from all evil. He shall preserve thy soul. He's preserving your mind, your will and emotions. He's preserving our children. He's preserving our spouse. He's preserving the body of Christ. The Lord shall preserve thy going out and thy coming in. Deuteronomy 28. You shall be blessed in the city, blessed in the fields, blessed when you come, blessed when you go. It's time for God's people to stand up in their rightful authority given to them from Jesus. Walk in your power, walk in your authority in the name of Jesus. We bind every strong man of death and infirmity. I bind and cast you out. Any demons that's attacking us, I bind and cast you out in the name of Jesus. Father God, release your word. Father, release the blood. Father God, release your will. In the name of Jesus, Father God, release your breath. Father God, release love and joy and peace, oh God. Release faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Father God, release your patience. Father God, release your goodness. Father, release your wisdom, your knowledge, understanding, oh God. And set your people free. Father, you say your people perish for lack of knowledge. Hallelujah. This is your knowledge. Let, let me give you the, the, new, the new international version. I will lift up my eyes to the mountains, the mountains of God, Mount Zion. 
Where does my help come from? It's time for the body of Christ to know that God is helping us. The name Lazarus means God helps Ezra. God is helping us in the name of Jesus. Whatever it is that you stand in need of, God said, I'm going to supply your needs. I will supply your needs. He told me, I don't owe child support for my children. I'm a good father and no good thing will I withhold from those who are living holy before me. God is your helper. All of your help is coming from God. Not your boss. Not your boss. Not your friends. Not your family. God said, I'm going to bless you with the reserve blessings that I have and that I have kept aside for you, reserved in the name of Jesus. Preserve me to keep something in its original, original state. God said, I'm restoring unto you the years the conquer worms, the palmer worms ate up in your life. I'm bringing you back to your original state. You will do what I've called you to do originally in the name of Jesus. The enemy tried to take you out, but I preserve you. In the name of Jesus, by the blood you are preserved. By the stripes of Jesus we are preserved. No weapon formed against us will prosper. And the Bible says, where does my help come from? Question mark. I'm asking you, where does your help come from? And he answered, my help comes from the Lord. The maker of heaven and earth every single day. Psalm 121 verse 2. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. My help comes from the Lord. Not people. Not the doctor. Not the lawyer. Not the judge. Not the government. Not the school. My help cometh from the Lord. My help cometh from the Lord. Just ask the Samaritan woman at the well. My help cometh from the Lord. He is my spring of living water. Just ask Lazarus. My help cometh from the Lord. He opened up the tomb. He opened the tomb, rolled the stone away, and called me forth. Just ask Lazarus. Just ask Hagar. All of my help cometh from El Roy, the God who sees me. Just ask Abraham. Huh, he will tell you, Yahweh Jireh, the God who sees me and provide all of my help cometh from the Lord. Just ask the woman with the issue of blood. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Not the doctors. They gave up on me. Took all my money. Just ask the woman with the issue of blood. All of my help cometh from the Lord. Just ask Moses. Standing at the Red Sea. Don't know what to do because Pharaoh is behind him with the army. With their iron chariots. And he's like, who's going to help me now? Who's going to help the children of Israel now? Who's going to help? Moses was stuck. Wilderness here. Wilderness there. The army behind him. The Red Sea before me was trapped. So it seemed. So it seemed. And the Bible says, God said, what is in your hand? He said, you better use that thing that you have in your hand, which is power. Power that comes from Yahweh. I already told you I am that I am. I already showed you that I'm the one who's going to make the, the burning bush not be burnt up. I already showed you who I am. I chose, I've chosen you, Moses. Use what you have in your hands. And the Bible says, God said, stand still, stand still. All of your help come from me. Just stand still, stand still, stand still. Stand still and see the deliverance of the Lord your God. The Egyptian, the Egyptians that you see today. God said, you shall see them no more forever. Oh, that long battle that you've been in. That long, long, long. That long battle that you have been in. The Egyptians that you see today. Exodus 14. You shall see them no more forever. Their time is up. Because God said, my word will not return back unto me void, but it must be accomplished. Therefore, God must honor his word, Psalm 91, 
in Psalm 121, it says, all of my help. It says right here. Let me wipe my eyes real quick. And so it says, in Psalm 121, my help comes from the Lord. The Lord showed the Israelites who was really in control, who was really their help. Because before they were in slavery, they were in bondage, and so they were dependent on Pharaoh for food. But as they began to let go of man, let go of their past, and step out on faith to leave, they had nobody but God to depend on. And I'm talking to myself. And so my help comes from the Lord. You got to know where your help is coming from. I don't care how it looks. I don't care what Red Sea is in front of you. I don't care what wilderness is next to you. I don't care what kind of army is coming back, coming behind you. Maybe it's the, it's the army of infirmity. Maybe it's poverty trying to chase you. Whatever it is that's chasing you. God said, what is in your hand? And part that Red Sea and cross over on dry land into your promised land, a land flowing with milk and honey. That is your portion. That is your birthright. God's word must be fulfilled. He said, he will not let your foot slip. He will not let your foot slip. Why? Because you have all your gospel shoes of peace, firmly planted and rooted in God. You're under solid rock. His name is Jesus. He will not let your foot slip. He will not let your foot slip. He will not let you. Why? Because God is holding you, holding you up. You are inscribed in the palm of God's hand. God is not going to let you stum stumble and fall apart. God said, I'm holding you up. I'm holding you. You're standing up. Didn't he promise you? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Didn't Peter tell the man, get up. Your ankles are strong. Get up. When you stand up, it's a sign of strength. And God said, I'm strengthening you. You shall stand again. And you're not going to fall because you're standing in me. You are standing on the solid rock and his name is Jesus. He will not let your foot slip because you're not walking on a slippery path. You're walking on a path of righteousness for his name's sake. The Bible said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. So God not going to bring you to a slippery, a slippery place of sin. He said he who watches over you will not slumber. God is not sleeping. Spirits don't sleep. God is always watching you. You know how you watch a baby that's sleeping? You watch the baby and you and, and you marvel at that baby. You admire that baby. That's the same way your father is to you when you're living right. When you're living right, God is watching you. He said, my eyes are always on the righteous. My ears are attentive to their cry. He is watching you. He is watching. He is watching you. And God is writing everything down in his book. He saw, he's seeing things that nobody's seeing. And I'm not talking about just your sins because we all fall short. I'm talking about those you repent every day. You, you, you're walking the straight and narrow. God is, God is taking notes of the good things that you have been doing. That's been overlooked by everybody else. God said, I've been praying attention to you. And you shall reap what you have sown. You will reap what you have sown. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, he has been watching you. The same way a supervisor watches you on a job. The same way a manager is watching you to see all that you're doing, to see whether or not you're going to be promoted. God said, I've been watching you. I'm going to promote you in the name of Jesus. I'm going I'm to elevate you in the name of Jesus. It says, the Lord watches over you, Mitchell. The Lord watches over you, Erica. The Lord is watching over you and your family in the name of Jesus. It says, the Lord is your shade at your right hand. Some of us been going through some fiery situations and it's as if the sun has just been beaming down on you. And it's like as if you're like a plant and it's like, it's like the enemy wants your leaves to be withered. But God says, I'm your shade. I want, let's type that. God is my shade at my right hand. 
God is my shade. You've been going through a long battle. And it just seems like the sun is just beaming and glaring and just burning you. And you've been going through it and going through it. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. Because you said that to God. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil because God is with me. He's my rod and my staff. He's comforting me. Because you trust in God like that. God said, I'm going to bless you. I'm your shade. I'm your shade. I'm covering you. I'm your shade in the name of Jesus. I'm your shade at your right hand. I'm covering you. I'm covering you. He that dwelleth in the secret place. Because you've been dwelling in the secret place of the Most High God. Because you have been abiding under the shadow of the Almighty. The shadow. He's your shade. He's your, he, his shadow is protecting you. He's protecting you and your family. He's been protecting you and the angels. They've been standing guard around you. So the sun will not smite you by day, nor the moon by night. He said, I've been guarding you. I've been protecting you. I've been your shade. I've been your shade. I've been your shade. Your protection from the storm. I've been protecting you. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. And that's what the word preserve means. Protection. I promise you that no weapon formed against you will prosper. That's a promise. That's covenant. That's covenant. I'm faithful. I'm the faithful God. I will never change. I am faithful. Even when you're not faithful. I am faithful. That's my nature. That's who I am. I will not change. And I promise to bless you. I promise you that my word will be fulfilled. Psalm 121 will be fulfilled. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of God is saying. I'm preserving you. The blood of my son is preserving you and your household. The same way I, I preserve Rahab, the prostitute, by, by her just putting the, the red scarlet yarn. I preserved her house. I'm preserving your house. I'm talking about a household blessing. A household blessing in the name of Jesus. Like the prison warden, you and your household will be saved. The sanctified spouse make everybody holy. In the name of Jesus, that is the word of God. We're believing God to save everybody in your household. In the name of Jesus, he says, he will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. He's not sleeping on you. He's your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day, nor the moon by night, nor the moon by night, nor the moon by night. There will be no satanic attacks against you at night because my angels are standing guard around you. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. God is watching over the life of our children. God is watching over the life of our spouse, the body of Christ. God is watching over your life. Your life is precious. He is watching over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going. Every day when you get up and God is leading you all about, he said, I'm watching over you. <clears throat> I'm watching over you. And when you look at the word preserve, it means... To maintain something in its original state. Joel 2.25. <clears throat> God is restoring back unto you. What was devoured. So that you can maintain your original state. That's the word of God. Preserved. That's right the word preserve. I am preserved by God. It means protect. To maintain. Care for. Take care of. Safeguard. Okay, what does protect mean? 
Now, yesterday I had a, I, got a, I got an email from somebody named Mr. Shield. I saw the word battle about three times back to back. <clears throat> and then somebody named Mr. Shield, S-H-I-E-L-D, <clears throat> emailed me. The word protect means to keep safe from harm or injury. And some of the synonyms mean, it says, to keep safe, to shield. What does the word shield mean? Shield means a broad piece of metal or another suitable material held by straps or a handle attached on one side, used as a protection against blows. God is your shield. So when the enemy is trying to send the blows, okay, trying to like send the blows to take you out, okay, missiles, trying to blow you up, God said, I blocked it. I blocked it. I shield you. I shield you from things that you had no idea was coming in your direction. I shielded you. It means buckler. Shield means buckler. God is our buckler. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. It means guard. A person or thing providing protection. It means guard. It means defense. It means cover. It's a screen. It means screen. It means shade. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for confirming your word. It means safety, security, shelter, support, protector. That's our God in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Holy Ghost, for showing me why, why, why I got Mr. Shield yesterday in the battle. So in the battle, in the battle, God is your shield. God is your shield. Oh, my God. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Thank you, Father God. He's your shield. Thank you, Father God. I'm just looking up something really quickly. Thank you. I love when the revelation just manifests so I can understand it better. And so you got to hold up your shield of faith every day. This is a shield like this. You know, a shield. Okay? So God, imagine you got a shield. I'm talking about all around you. Not just in the front. God, because the armor of God doesn't talk about the back, right? It talk about the shield of faith and everything like that. But God, God is, if you can see it, it's like all around you, the, the hedge of thorn, the hedge of protection, the fiery angelic chariots. Amen. That's why the Bible says when the children of Israel were leaving Egypt, God sent the, the, um, the, 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 what is it? The pillar, the pillar of fire and cloud whatever you don't know talk about and it, it protected them so that's what that is mm -hmm. so we knowing who we are in God knowing that God is protecting us hold up your shield of faith what is faith faith right is believing that God exists and that he is a rewarder of those who diligently seek him so you have been diligently seeking God God gonna reward you with protection Right, with, with restoration, with healing. I'm talking about God shielded your body from certain diseases that you would probably have no idea. Some of the stuff that we eat, God is like shielding us by the blood, by the blood, by the blood, by the blood. Glory to God. And so I received that for myself. Now, the rest of the um, lessons I'm going to save for Monday. The Holy Spirit has already shown me what He wants me to talk about on Monday. So if you have not registered for the um, the prayer, make sure you register. I'm going to put the link for you to register. We're going to go in on Monday, honey, at 8 p.m. And so one Psalm 121, just, just eat that up. Now I love how Psalm 121 goes with Psalm 91. And we read these all the time. We're like, you know, we get so complacent sometimes, you know. But I love how... Psalm 91 and Psalm 121, they're like twins. Like, they're feeding off of each other. Right? Amen? Oh, Erica, you already registered. God bless you. Erica registered. Destiny registered. And, and a few more people registered. And so, Psalm 91. Those of you, you're like, Lord, I need you like yesterday. We hear this all the time. Never get too comfortable with the word of God. We're like, oh my God, I already read that. He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High 
will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So if you want to be protected and preserved, you must dwell in the shelter, okay? The house of the Lord. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, Psalm 27. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. You got to stay in God's house. Amen? That place of worship, that place of obedience, that, that place of prayerfulness. And you must rest. Write that down. Rest. Yes, I love that emoji of the armor. Yes. Oh, my God. Please write that down. There's a, in the book of Hebrews, we talk about rest for, the, for the, um, the people of God. Write down rest. Write down rest. Let, let me see what the Holy Spirit wants us to um, learn about rest. Because I saw the word serenity today. Serenity. So rest means cease work or movement in order to relax, refresh oneself, or recover strength. You need to rest in the Lord, right? Rest. Stop trying to work it out. You know, some people, I'm working it out. Well, that's that's on you because I don't know how to work anything out, <laughs> right? So you let God work things out. Hey, Brittany. Who else is on here? Colette, blessings to, to you guys. So when you rest, you relax. You slow down. You pause. You take a break. Why? Because you know God is in control. Your position, your posture is to trust. Right? Trust in the Lord. Rest in the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And lean not to your own understanding. In all your ways, acknowledge him. Acknowledge him. And you're going to do what? Direct your path. So rest. Hi, Taisha. So rest. It says to um, recharge one's batteries. I love that one. To recharge, because you know God is your circuit, He's your dunamis power, right? So recharge one's batteries. It means to um, to, to to put one's feet up. <laughs> okay, it means to lie down or go to bed, all that. It also means to be placed or supported so as to stay in a specified position. To it says be placed or supported. So as to stay in a specified position. That's the same word as preserve. Okay? Same, same as preserve. Um, what else? It means respite. Respite. It means to um, shut your eyes. That's, that's the rest. It says breathing space. Then God said he's going to give us the breath. Okay? Breathing space. So when you go back to Psalm, 90, Psalm 91, 91, excuse me. It says... Whoever dwells in the shelter, what's going to happen? You're going to rest. So, Father God, we thank you for giving us rest. Some people, you need to rest. For real. Stop stressing. I had to learn how to do that myself. Just rest in God. I've always had faith in God. Like, well, like radical faith. But in this season of my life, I know that I have to really rest in the Lord and trust him um, to, to just do everything that I need, right? So, it says, verse 2. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. So, you know, he's protecting you. Refuge is a place of safety, fortress, a place of um, safety. So if you're in God, you got to trust him. I trust God. That he's going to answer your prayers. He's going to heal your body. He's going he gonna to save your children. He's going to give you a place to live. He's going to provide you with food. This rest. For real. Cast your cares on the Lord. Cast your cares. Stop trying to carry all those burdens. It's weighing you down. An airplane cannot go up in the air with extra weight. Like a lot of weight. You got to throw them off so you can mount up on wings as eagles and soar. Amen. So it says, surely he will save you from the foulest snare. That's, that's confidence in God. Surely he will save you from the foul snares, right? And from the deadly pestilence. God going to protect you. He's going to keep you safe. He's going to cover you with his feathers. Under his wings, you can find refuge. His faithfulness will be your shield. There's that word shield again. God's faithfulness is your shield. That is so cute. I wish I, I, wish I had a shield. So let's pretend that this is a shield. God's faithfulness is going to protect you. He's faithful. Oh my God. It says, His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. So this is right here. God is faithful. His faithfulness is your shield. 
is protecting you. In his faithfulness, God is protecting you and protecting me. You see, I was a heart love. He loves you. He loves you. Nothing shall be able to separate you from God's love, which is in Christ Jesus. Amen? So it says, what else? His faithfulness will be your shield and rampart. Yeah, you can put some hearts for that one. You can put some hearts. That's right. It says, you will not be afraid of the pestilence that stalks in darkness. Why? Because God's going to be your... Your shade. He said the sun is not going to smite you by day nor the moon by night. So you don't have to be afraid of no pestilence that stalks in darkness. Amen? One second. This door. Okay? So you don't got to be afraid. Those of you who can't sleep at night, that's a promise from the Lord. The, the, moon, the, 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 the sun will not smite you by day nor the moon by night. You don't have to be afraid of the pestilence that stalks in darkness. Why? Because you're dwelling in God. He's your protector. He's your shield. Amen? No plagues gonna come at you in the, in the midday. How could the plague come against you when God is your shield? And the shield is faithfulness. That means he promised to protect you. He's gonna protect you. Hands down. And the story. It says, a thousand may fall at your side. A thousand is gonna fall over to your side. But God said in Deuteronomy 1 11, he giving you a thousand fold blessing. A thousand fold blessing is, is what God has given to you. While a thousand of your enemies are falling down, God is going to give you a thousand fold blessing. In the name of Jesus. So it says, even though 10,000 fall down at your right hand, it says, listen, none of that's going to come near you. Because God promised to bless us. A thousand fold blessing. So I don't care who falling down. 10,000. They could fall down. I don't care about the economy. I don't care about who getting sick and this and that. God said, no sickness going to come near my dwelling. He said, by the stripes of Jesus, I am healed. So I don't care what's going on in the government. I don't care what crash or what don't crash. I know that God, God promised to bless me. <laughs> so that's why I'm not tripping, bugging, acting crazy because my blessing will locate me. The wealth of the wicked belong to me. God going to give me houses that I did not build. Listen, I got favor with God and with men. So I'm not stressing. I'm not worrying because God must fulfill his word. Amen. And that make me smile like you should be smiling right now. Just go ahead and practice. I don't care who's in office. I don't care how crazy the, pre the president is. I don't care what's going on in the school system. My children are protected by God. Their angels are in camp all over. I don't care what y'all say. I don't care about this and that. I don't care. I don't care about that lawyer over there. My lawyer is Jesus. I'm not tripping. I'm not bugging. I know to go to God in prayer. He said he going to answer me. The effectual fervent prayers of a righteous man avail it much. So I go to God. I pray and I get my breakthrough. Keep it moving all day. For real. And if I cry, he's bottling up my tears. He's like, come on, come on, come on. Let, let, me, let me bottle up your tears. because I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to bless you. I'm going to bless you. Every time you cried. <laughs> Every time you had to cry, I'm going to bless you. And I cried many, 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 many years. So I'm expecting my many, 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 many blessings, honey. It says, you will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked. So while the wicked are being punished, I'm getting their blessings. <laughs> oh my God, listen. God is so good. While the wicked are, are suffering, my, my household is blessed. <laughs> Ooh, favor is sweet like honey. Right, Ruth? Amen. Okay. So the Bible says, if you say the Lord is my refuge, if you say, do you say this? Do you say, <laughs> Ruth, you're making me laugh. What do you say, right? It says, if you say the Lord is my refuge, do you say the Lord is your refuge? Do you say that the Lord is your refuge? I'm gonna wait for your response. It says, if, contingency, if you say the Lord is my refuge, because some people are not saying that. You, you have more faith in your boss. You got more faith in the circumstance and what you can see. If you say the Lord is my refuge, if you make the most high your dwelling, it's an if. What's going to happen to you? 
no harm will overtake you. The Deuteronomy 28 verses 1 to 14 blessing going to overtake you. If you, if this is, if you say the Lord is my refuge, you got to say it with your mouth. Confess with your mouth. Death and life are in the power of your tongue. Okay? You shall be able to decree a thing and it will be established. If you say, open your mouth, what do you say? I admit your blessings to you. If you say the Lord is my refuge, if you make the most high your dwelling, no evil will, will overtake you. Only the blessings, the blessing going to chase you down. Deuteronomy 28, verses 1 to 14. The blessing going to accompany or overtake you. I mean, you're, you're going to be trying to get your breath and the blessings are coming on you. Coming on you. Because God said, I'm going to bless you exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think. So I say, God is my refuge. I say, the most high is my dwelling place. The most high is my dwelling place. In the name of Jesus. And, and when you make him your dwelling, you see all, all the protection is coming with it. Amen. Then it says, no harm will overtake me. No disaster will come near my tent. What does the word disaster mean? I mean, we know, we heard these things before. What does disaster mean? Because if you say you're a child of God and you're always going through disaster, something is wrong. Like my mentor say, you're on my suspect list. Because that's, that's, that's anti-word. Disaster is a sudden event such as an accident or natural catastrophe that causes great damage or loss of life. That's not my portion. That is not, that is not my birthright. In the name of Jesus, disaster is catastrophe, calamity, tribulation. I'm talking about just suffering all the time. That's not, that's not my portion. Even the word holocaust. It's under catastrophe. That is not my portion. Tragedy, uh-uh. No, 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 no. Failure, no. This, this is what God said right here about me. I go with the word of God. It says, no disaster, verse 10, no disaster will come near my tent. I decree and declare that no harm will overtake me and no disaster will come near my tent in the name of Jesus. Why? God has already commanded his, his angels. He already commanded his angels concerning more. <laughs> and you, if you're living holy. It says, God's going to command his angels concerning you. To guard you. Guard means to preserve. To guard you in all your ways. Wherever you go, the angels are guarding you. Shielding you. Protecting you from stuff that you don't even see. Stuff you don't even see. God is like block, 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 block. I promised my daughter no disaster. Block. That fatal car accident. Block. That's the God I believe in based on his word. I mean, if it's your time to die, that's different. But God promised me life and life more abundantly here and after. Christ said, I've come that you will have life and I have life more abundantly. So ain't no demon or devil going to take me out of here or my children or my spouse or my assignments prematurely. And so it says, no disaster will come near your tent for he will command his angels concerning you. And if I get hit, if I get hit, because you know many of us have gotten hit, God said, I'm going to restore you. God said, I'm going to restore you. Come on now. The devil thought he got you. He was like, oh my God, laughing, having a party at, at, at your situation. But God was like, put a comma there. It's not, it's not a period. Put a comma. Joel 2.25, I got to restore them. I got to restore them. I got to restore them. Because, listen, maybe it was your sin that opened the door. Maybe it was some kind of curse that is in the bloodline. Whatever it was that made that attack come through, God said, wait, 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 wait. I got to restore. What does restore mean? Speak Holy Ghost. Because I know some of us pick up our daddy's de um, demons and the familiar spirits and curses. God said, okay, 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 okay. Because God is a legal God. And you didn't know about some of the stuff in your bloodline. And you don't got hit. Restore. What does the word restore mean? There's hope for us today. There is hope for us. Restore. 
it ooh speak lord speak lord speak 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 the word preserve right said we're going to put you back in your original state so when you got hit because of whatever some curse in the bloodline or some sin because the wages of sin is death okay god said because you repented did all your first work over preservation is your portion I'm, it's pres pre preservation preserve means to put you back in your original state what does the word restore mean to bring back a previous right practice custom or situation so write that down God is restoring me Joel 2.25 is my portion restore same thing as preserve okay preserve the first definition talk about the first definition God gonna restore you and preserve you 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 by the blood because the God got to honor his word preserve you and restore you Pre listen restore preserve back and forth back and forth back and forth back and forth in the name of Jesus it says to return to a former position or state the conquer worms that ate up your blessing and the enemy was laughing like, oh snap, I got them. And God was like, wait, 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 wait. My daughter just spoke Psalm 121. My son just released Psalm 91. Now Psalm 103 must be fulfilled where my angel got to get the word now and manifest the word and fulfill the word and fulfill the word. In the name of Jesus. What does restore mean? Repair. Replace. Rebuild. Rehabilitate, renovate. That's my portion right here. That's because that's, sin done damaged me up, right? Sin done messed me up. The, the sins of the, of the bloodline messed me up. But because we repent, humble ourselves, change our mind, God said, I'm a menu. I'm going to fix the situation. I'm going to rebuild it because I'm Elohim. I'm, I'm the master, supreme architect. I, I, don't, I got you. All things are working together for your good. I got you. I got you. I, got, I must honor my word in the name of Jesus. Now let's go back and finish Psalm 91 and we are finished. It says, so his angels are going to protect us, right? Then when God restore you, give you back your rightful authority. Christ, I'll give you power and authority. God said, I have dominion. It says this right here. Verse 12. The angels will lift you up in their hands. So that you will not strike your foot against a stone. Amen. Didn't Psalm 121 say your foot will not slip? Your foot will not slip. Right? Your foot's not going to slip. The angels are holding you up. So that you will not strike your foot against a stone. That's protection. That's protection. And then God said what? I'm anoint your, your foot. I'm anointed with the oil. I'm anointed. I'm going to soak it in the blood. So that you can shred upon the lion and the cobra. That you can trample the great lion and the serpent. Christ said the same thing in the New Testament. You'll be able to trample on serpents and scorpions. And over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Why? Because your angels are fighting with you. They're fighting the battle. God said, I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your battles. I'll fight your battles. And so it says, you will tread upon what? The lion? The cobra? You're going to trample. Trample that thing that was trying to trample you. In the name of Jesus. Why? Because God, right? God is so faithful. His faithfulness is your shield. Right? His faithfulness is your shield. And God's going to honor his word. He's going to show you that he's faithful. Watch. Verse 14. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. God is rescuing you. We've read this before. This is like, this, this is my daily medicine, right? I can read this all day. He says, because he loves me, says the Lord, I will rescue him. Write that down. God's going to rescue you. My God is rescuing me. That means whenever trouble comes, there's a way of escape. No temptation has befall you. That's not common to man. And God is faithful, right? He's going to deliver you. Breakthrough. Give you a breakthrough. Listen, a way of escape. He is the God of a breakthrough. So if you're back up against the wall, he said, I'm going to rescue you. I'm going to put a hole in that thing and pull you out. Come on, come on, Moses. I'm going to draw you out of every demonic water. I'm going to give you a breakthrough. I'm going to part the Red Sea. Breakthrough. 
I'm going to cause honey and oil and water to come out your rock. Right? The rocky situation. Breakthrough. And so rescue means to save someone from a dangerous or distressing situation. Rescue means to save. Who's your savior? Yeshua. It says to save someone from a dangerous or distressing situation. That's why God sent Jesus. That's why he sent the angels to rescue us. It means to save, save from danger, save the life of, to liberate, to free. He whom the son has set free is free indeed. You are redeemed. You are redeemed. You are redeemed. It means to release. Isaiah 61 is our portion. God said, I'm going to rescue you. Send the captives free by the anointing of God that destroys the yoke of bondage. It means emancipate. It means ransom. It means redeem. It means relieve. It means deliver. That is my portion in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Rescue means to release. It means deliverance. It means redemption. It means re uh, it, it means assist. And God is rescuing me. That's why I ain't worried about nothing. I can rest. 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 Are you encouraged? Rest. Go to sleep. Get, get, get your faithfulness pillow and be like, be like Jacob. Jake, Jacob, listen, got him a rock, honey, and went to sleep on the rock after he done just scam his, his daddy and his brother, right? And he went to sleep. If, if he can go to sleep, you can go to sleep. The, the Bible said God gave his beloved sleep. And, 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 and Jacob is over there sleeping on that rock. Distrusting, distrusting. And then God is so faithful that God gave him a vision of the, the, the heavens open up a portal and the stairs and the angels coming up and down and God's at the top. Come on. If God can do that for oh trickster Jacob, he going to bless me. Because <laughs> I am not that shady. To go trick my daddy, scheming with my mama, and, and, and just trample on my brother. Let me get my music. Come on now, God is faithful. Faithful, faithful, faithful is our God. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Faithful is the Lord. Faithful is the Lord. Okay. Because he loves me, says the Lord, I'm going to rescue him. He said, I'm going to protect you. So rescue you. He's going to protect you. Why? Because you acknowledge my name. If my people. Okay, come on now. You got to. It says, because you acknowledge my name. Faith. What's faith? Is believing that God exists. Acknowledge him. Okay? Acknowledge him in all your ways. And he will protect you. He will direct your path. I will protect him. For he acknowledges my name. Do you acknowledge the name of the Lord? God said he's going to protect you. Do you acknowledge the name of the Lord? God said he's going to protect you. Do you love the Lord? Do you love the Lord? He said he's going to rescue you. Do you love me? Peter, do you love me? I know you denied me three times, Peter. Peter, do you love me? Yes, Lord, you know I love you. You know I messed up. I know I denied you. I know I don't. Peter, do you love me? Oh, I, oh yes, I love you. I love Peter, do you love me? Yes, yeah, yes. Go feed my sheep. Go feed my sheep. Okay? Because he loves me, says the Lord. I'm going to rescue him. So you got to ask yourself, do I love God? Do I love God? Yes, I love God. Well, God going to rescue me. That's a promise. That's one of the keys of the kingdom. Number two, do you acknowledge God? Do you, do you acknowledge that he exists? He said, I'm going to protect you. Verse 15, it says, you will call on me. And what's going to happen? God said, I'm going to answer you. Have you been calling on the Lord? Well, he promised to answer. What do you want, Erica? How may I help you today? Brittany, what is it that you need from me today? This, that's, this is prayer. What, what is it that you need? Ruth? How may I help you today? Who else is on this? Oh, Mitchell. How may I help you today? Colette. Hey, Colette. What is it that you need for me to do today? Destiny. What is it? What is it? What is it, my daughter? What, what do you need today? How may I help you? I'm listening. So God gonna get his book. Because God loves to write. 
And so, guys, right now, all, all your requests, let your requests be made known unto the Lord, and the peace of God will pass all understanding, will guard your heart, right? So, he's taking notes, and right now, your prayer requests. Celicia, okay, what is it that you need, sweetie? Writing it down. Who else? Who else is on here? Jesus, Jesus. Okay, okay writing this down. What do, what do you want me to do today? What does my word say concerning that situation? Okay, so you need healing. You're sick. Okay, what, what does my word say concerning um, those, of, those of you who get sick? Yes, Isaiah 53. Okay, let's go to Isaiah 53. Okay, because bring my word back to me because I'm, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a supreme judge. And so I do everything by the law. And so everything must be in my word. This is the constitution. This is the this is the the book I use. So we're gonna go to Isaiah 53. Let me see if you're right about this. You need healing? Okay, let me find out what, what this. Oh, you said verse four. Oh, you you know the verse Isaiah 53. Okay, sure. Verse four. Okay, let me read what it says. Surely he took up our infirmities and carried our sorrows. Yet we considered him stricken by God, smitten by him, and afflicted. Okay, keep on going. Where does, where does this say I'm going to heal you at? Where, where does this say? Oh, verse 5. Okay. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. Okay. Angels, Michael, Gabriel, Raphael. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. Because I promised them in, in Psalm 103 that you, the angels are going to fulfill it. You get it? So I'm making my request every day be made known unto God, honey. <laughs> I'm on the phone with God. Listen, I gotta get my charger and everything because God loves when I talk to him. And sometimes you you gotta go quiet. You like this. So that God can look up the word. Okay? And you gotta be quiet. Listen to what God is saying on the other end. You already told God, God, I need healing. Okay, God, God, God checking the, why, why God is checking and working things out. You're quiet, resting, trusting like this. Cause I know my God coming. I know my God's not gonna stand me up. I know my God's always on time, and so I'ma wait. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So you go mute. You go like this. Dancing and praising the Lord. Three way call. Yes, Ruth. That's like carrot bars. We are taught in carrot bars. When we do a three-way call, when you get the leader on the phone, another leader, you go quiet while the leader and your prospect is talking, and you be quiet and you listen and learn. <laughs> Sometime, stop talking. Stop talking. Right? Because God, God is investigating your situation. He's a lawyer, right? The lawyer, not going to take your word for it. Listen, the lawyer got to investigate everything, the judge, right? All that. Put the pieces together. You're like, oh, my God, God, I don't know what we're going to do. Oh, my God, I pay my bills, Jesus. You're on the phone now. This is some of us. You're on the phone. Oh, God. Oh, the bill just came. You're crying. It's not in. Oh, God. Oh, God, I need help. Oh. What did my word say? God, you said um, Psalm 23, I think it is. I think it's Psalm 23. I think I... Okay, let's go to Psalm 23. Where, where does it say I'm going to help you at in Psalm 23? Let's, let's find it, my daughter. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall, not, I shall not be in want. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. He prepared a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Okay, okay. Angels, you get it? God is always checking the word to make sure everything line up with the word. He's faithful. He's never going to go against his word. So if you, if you don't know the Bible... You already missed out right there. You don't. You already lost. Get in your word. I don't care if you start out with the Psalms. Start at the book of Matthew. Go, work your way to Genesis. I mean, just read the Bible as led by the Spirit of God. And God going to fix that thing for you. Now let's finish up. So it says, he will call on me. We just did the whole demonstration of the calling. All right. And God said, I'm going to answer. He didn't say, I might answer. He said, I will. I will answer you. I will answer you. I will answer you. He's not gonna call. You know, sometimes, sometimes sometimes people call us and we don't answer the phone. I don't make phone calls. I don't talk to people on the phone. 
right? So, you know, we see the phone, we're like, we look, we're like, mm. and we go blind, we're like, they ain't, ain't going for me. God does not do that. He said, um, he will call on me and I will answer. <laughs> Caller ID, it says, destiny is calling. And God is happy to answer because he's a good father. He's not going to say, oh my God, it's destiny again. I'm so sick of this. What you calling for? She calling me about the same thing over and over. Uh, that's not God. People do that. <laughs> he going to answer you. He said, I'm going to be with you in trouble. I'm so, I'm so good to you that I, I, my spirit is inside of you. And he's your advocate and your helper. That's how much I love you. The helper is already inside of you. So I'm not that far from you. <laughs> I'm right inside. All you gotta do is tap into the Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus, um, Jesus says that girl can sing. God, give me an anointed voice to sing for you too in Jesus' name. Listen, is it, the God is so amazing. <laughs> God is awesome. He's like, my spirit is, it, it's, listen, you got, you got the telephone right inside your belly. Out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. You have a connection already inside of you. Your advocate, your lawyer. The Holy Ghost is already interceding for you, Romans 8. So he see you need something, and he's like, okay, destiny. Whoever else, Brittany, I don't know who else is on here, collect. So, so the Holy Ghost sees something coming or something happening to you, right? He see you're struggling in your business, right? And so the Holy Ghost is like, Psalm 1. That's, that's still small voice, right? Psalm 1. Psalm 1. In your spirit, Psalm 1. Your business is like going through. Holy Ghost is like Psalm 1. It's like Psalm 1. Psalm 1. Psalm 1. And see, so like, what's Psalm 1? Are you talking to you? So you go into Psalm 1. Your business is having a hard time. And you're reading, reading, reading. And you're like, oh, verse 3. He is like a tree. Who's like a tree? The one who's walking in God is like a tree planted by the streams of waters, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither, and whatever he does prospers. Oh, my business is supposed to be prospering. Thank you, Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Holy Ghost. My business is prospering. You begin to agree with the word of God. Wherever two or three are gathered, touching the green, you agreeing with the Holy Ghost. You agreeing with the word of God, which is Jesus. God is right there smiling like, I got you. I got you. And the Holy Spirit says, Jeremiah 29, 11. Colette, Jeremiah 29, 11, girl. And you're like, Okay, I just read Psalm 1, and it says, God gonna prosper me, God's gonna prosper me, I'm gonna be successful in what I do, because I'm, I'm rooted in, in God, I'm planted in God, oh my God. And he's like, Jeremiah 29, girl. Mitchell, he's like, this, Jeremiah 29, 11, go, 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 right now, go, right now, go, right now, go, double blessing, double, 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 go now, go, you're like, oh my God, Jeremiah 29, 11, okay, all right, I can't, I can't drown out the, the voice of the Lord, okay, Jeremiah 11, God's teaching me, oh my God, what does Jeremiah 29, 11 say, oh my God, I need my glasses, I can't see, let me put on my spiritual eyes, oh my God, Jeremiah 29, 11, what does that say, what does that say, what does that say? Oh my God, ah! you start screaming at that point. Oh my God, for I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you. Oh my God, God's plan is to prosper me. God's plan is to prosper me. Oh my God. And before you know it, you don't broke out, honey, broke free. That's how God does it. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. How are we gonna deliver you with the word? He gonna bring you right to the Bible verse. Right? And you're gonna read that thing and get your deliverance. God is so good. He said, I will deliver you and honor you. What else? With long life, I will satisfy him. Long life. So therefore, there's no disaster. There's no calamity. There's no Holocaust. God said, with long life, I will satisfy him and show him my salvation. You get it? God is blessing you. 
And that goes back to Psalm 121. Yes. I'm, I, that just refreshed me because I had no idea how the Holy Spirit was going to talk to you guys and talk to me first and foremost. So Psalm 121, Psalm 91, they are twins. <laughs> Read that together and just meditate on that. And when you meditate that on that, you're going to be like a tree planted by the riverbanks. You're going to bear your fruit. Amen. Thank you guys for sharing the broadcast, Holy Spirit. God is so good. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I cover everybody who's listening to me. I cover you with the blood of Jesus. I cover your household with the blood of Jesus. God says he's, he's doing a work in the household. In the, I'm talking about this house, right? Your temple, your body, but the household, your bloodline. God's, God's doing a work in the house, okay? There's a, there's a verse in Acts. Let me see if I can find it. And I want you to write this down. Acts 16, 31 is your birthright. They replied, believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. You and your household. God is doing something with the household. God is saving the household. Believe on the Lord. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And thou shalt be saved. And thy house. And thy house. And so, and it says, another translation says, your family. Your family. And so I'm believing God for a household revival. Acts 16.31. I'm talking about just everybody being set on fire for God. Everybody being like like the day of Pentecost. I'm praying that Pentecost will hit our houses for real. That's that's my prayer. With that revival will hit our house, our nation as well. I'm talking about revival in all the houses: the courthouse, the schoolhouse, the jailhouse, the pancake house, the smoke house. Okay, all the house, the gate house. That God's spirit will rain down, and that people will be saved. In the name of Jesus, I'm praying for my region. I'm praying for my nation. Listen, I'm praying for the seven continents. That revival will just begin to manifest in the name of Jesus. That God will fill our lungs with, 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 with divine breath. I'm talking about with, with that praise. That we begin to open up our mouth and cry out to God. Praise him. I'm praying that husbands, wives... Children, parents, neighbors, co-workers, lawyers, doctors, government, accountant, you name them. The judges, the prisoners. I'm talking about that, that God would draw them to Jesus and save them in the name of Jesus. I pray that God would transform the lives of our children. That God will open up their eyes, open up their ears, renew their mind. I'm talking about just open up their minds like let, let, let the sun shine in their minds that destroying every demonic strongholds and just just let the light of Christ just begin to penetrate their mind their soul their spirit everything so they can see him I pray that our families will just begin to speak in tongues that God will fill them with the Holy Ghost in the name of Jesus I pray for Cornelius blessing to fall down where the, the, the whole household and close friends are filled with tongues they're filled with the Holy Ghost I think that's the book of Acts 10, I believe. I'm not sure. A Cornelius blessing to hit our household in the name of Jesus. Uncles being set free. Aunts. I pray that miracle signs and wonders will follow us all the days of our lives. I pray that God will heal our bodies. I'm talking about things the doctors said would not be healed. I pray that God's healing power will rain down upon us by the stripes of Jesus we are healed I pray that broken marriages will be put back together that God will begin to rejoin husbands and wives back to him and then to each other I pray Father God that the body of Christ will be purified wearing a spotless garment the wedding, the wed the wedding gown Father God you come back for a church without spot or wrinkles oh God without spots or wrinkles. 
I pray, Father God, for true holiness to manifest, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father, please forgive us of all of our sins and cleanse us, oh God, of all unrighteousness. I pray, Father God, that you take away our stony hearts, oh God, and give us hearts of flesh. I pray, Father God, that you will renew the right spirit within us, oh God, within our children. I pray, Father God, that we, we will open up our eyes and see your great wonders, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those who are struggling financially, oh God, I pray, Father God, that you will prosper them, oh God, as they begin to humble themselves before you, oh God, that you open up blessed doors for them in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you bless our businesses, oh God, prosper our businesses, oh God, prosper us in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that you will heal our, our ministries, oh God, that we will really see your, your power manifested in our ministries, that souls upon souls upon souls to infinity, oh God, will be saved, oh God, in the name of Jesus. I pray, Father God, that those who are weak right now, that you will begin to strengthen them, oh God, with your joy, oh God. I pray, Father God, that you will refresh and revive them right now, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Those who have been hurt, oh God, I pray, dear God, that you'll be the bomb in Gilead for them right now, oh God, that you will heal them, oh God, restore them them, renew them, oh God, in the name of Jesus, that you restore them times seven, oh God. I pray to God that you will release your angels right now, oh God, to bless us, oh God. I bind a thief, I bind Satan, I cast them out into the abyss in the name of Jesus. The thief has been caught. He must give us back seven times what he has stolen from us in the name of Jesus. Seven time blessing. Father, I speak a hundredfold blessing, uh, an Isaac blessing, oh God. Uh, I pray to God that Genesis 26 will be our portion, uh, that you will cause us to reap a harvest of blessing hundredfold. Uh, Father God, I pray for Deuteronomy 111, uh, that a thousandfold blessing will manifest in our lives, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. A thousandfold blessing is our portion. A thousandfold blessing is our portion in the name of Jesus. I thank you. I seal all of us with the blood. I seal, oh God. I seal this prayer with the blood, this teaching with the blood. Father God, we thank you that you are answering our prayers, oh God. You're not ignoring us, oh God. You're answering us, Father God, at the right time, oh God. I pray for 24 hour blessings to continue to flow. You've been blessing me every single day, Father. I thank you, oh God. I seek first your kingdom, your righteousness, and all that I need will be added unto me, oh God. We seek your face, oh God. Father, we want you more than anything. Father, release your glory upon us, oh God. Father God, give us favor with you and with man. We thank you for the favor that we have with you and with man, oh God. I thank you, Father God, for exponential blessings coming at us, oh God, from the five different oceans, oh God, the seven continents, oh God. I call for our blessings, Father God, from the north, south, east, and west, oh God. I pray our blessings will overtake us right now in the name of Jesus. We're praying for our ancestral blessings, oh God. Father God, the blessings that our ancestors miss, we claim those. We, we claim the blessings of Abraham. Father God, you say your blessings make us rich and you add no sorrow to the blessings, oh God, in the name of Jesus. This is our season of restoration. This is our season of breakthrough. This is our season of favor. This is our season of favor. This is our season of favor. This is our season of favor and great breakthrough in the name of Jesus. This is our season to be healed. This is our season to be healed. This is our season where our gifts are stirred up. The gifts of our children, the gifts of our spouse, the body of Christ. This is our season. We're set on fire in the name of Jesus. Father, your word, your God, your word is like fire in our bones. Father, we ask right now that your, your word will begin to burn on the inside of us, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Begin to purify us at a different level, oh God. Let us hunger and thirst after you, oh God. Father God, we eat the salt of the word. Father God, we're thirsty because we're eating the salt of the word. And Father God, we drink the water of the word to satisfy and quench our thirst, oh God, in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, let your light shine inside of us, inside of our children, inside of those connected to us, oh God. Let your dunamis light, your power be turned on inside of us, oh God. Waking up the dead, oh God. Reviving every soul, oh God. In the name of Jesus. And I thank you, Father, for doing it, oh God. I thank you for answering by fire. Our God answers by fire. Our God is answering by fire. Our God is answering by fire. In the name of Jesus. Jesus, in the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you and I praise your name. Hallelujah. 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 Yes, Lord. Revelation.
Revelation 19. Yes, our champion is riding on a horse to come and to save us in the name of Jesus. The battle does not belong to you. The battle belongs to the Lord Most High. The battle belongs to God. Second Chronicles 20 is your portion. God is fighting your battle. You have the victory in the name of Jesus. God is blessing you, blessing you, blessing you. Hallelujah. He said exceedingly and abundantly above all you can ever ask or think in the name of Jesus. You will have no room to receive all the blessings. Hallelujah. Overflow, overflow, overflow. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Overflow, three day blessings. Three day blessings. Three of the end of the day. Oh, she and the end of the day. Oh, she and the end of the day. Oh, she. Three days. In three days. Oh, oh, in three days. In three days. Hallelujah. 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 I'm completing it. I'm perfecting it. I'm resurrecting it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I see three days. Three days. Three days. Three days. Three days. Three days. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. Thank you, God. Three days in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. What day is three days? I got to write that down. Who Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday. Thank you, Father God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God, in the name of Jesus. Thank you, God. Thank you, 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 thank you. Hallelujah. Three days. I don't know what three days means. I don't know what God's going to do in three days. But I'm going to keep my eyes wide open. I'm going to keep my eyes wide open. I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is. But I just want to thank you, Father God. I'm going to thank you, want to thank you, want to thank you, want to thank you, want to thank you, Father God, for showing your power. For showing your power. For sh oh, yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father God. In the name of Jesus. We worship you, oh God. We worship you, oh God. Ha! <sighs> Blessings to you, victorious ones. Woo! Thank you, God. Ha! <sighs> God is so good. God is so good. Thank you, Father God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. And I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you, Father God. Be blessed. Those of you who didn't register for the, um, the prayer revival on Monday, make sure you register, okay? Talk to you guys later.